Hello and welcome. You've tuned into another episode of AI Africa, your antenna intake on the continent with me, Kiamakhetsu Mosepili. In this week's segment, we take a look at a foundational level on what it takes to grow great tech advancement on the continent. We'll be talking to tech training and skill development with two organizations actively involved in doing so. But first, before we get into that conversation, we head over to Chanel AI, Africa's first AI News Reader standing by with your update on what's trending in AI. Over to you. Thanks, Kiomo. And here's a wrap of what's trending in AI. AU after single African digital agenda. The African Union will later this week host biennial ministerial meeting to advance Africa's digital agenda. This after public calls from Commissioner for Infrastructure and Energy, Amani Obuzaid, that the continent leverage digital technology to advance socio-economic development. The AU's draft Continental Artificial Intelligence Strategy is projected to contribute a staggering $15.7 trillion to global GDP, with $6.6 .6 trillion coming from increased productivity and $9.1 trillion from consumption effects by 2030. Cisco, 98% of SA business urgent to adopt AI. The AI Readiness Index recently published by global tech giant, Cisco, found 98% of South African respondents reporting an increased urgency to adopt AI technologies in the past six months. This while 89% of companies surveyed said they're not fully ready to integrate AI into their businesses. The survey also found that 59% of South African respondents believe they have a maximum of one year to implement an AI strategy before facing significant negative business impacts. Cisco adds that the demand for AI skills is outpacing the supply, creating a talent gap that organizations must address to effectively implement AI strategies. That's all from Missional AI, you're up to date. Over to you, Kiyomo. Now that you know what is trending in AI, it's time to see what it takes to develop the young minds that will trend in future in the headlines on Africa tech and the IT space. I'll be speaking to two company heads spearing the active training and job creation of African youth in the digital economy. First up, we have Stefan Lauer, the Managing Director at Afundi. And last but not least, I welcome Max Cavillier Giacomelli. He is the Head of Mobile for Development at GSMA. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining me today, and welcome to AI Africa. Thanks to you. Thank you. Let's kick off the interview by discussing your thoughts on how African youth are participating in the global digital economy. Is it enough, and what will it take to change the picture? Stefan, I'm going to start with you. Africa is about 10% of the global economy, and it's continuing to grow as it would do all over the world. There's good news. I think entrepreneurship is uh, high amongst African young people who want to get into the IT space. There are over 600 technology hubs in, South, in Africa in general. So that's the good news. I think there is also a great amount of innovation where um, young people are trying to use the new technical skills, opportunities, and apply them to our social or unique uh, challenges that we face in Africa. So that's the good news. And Max, I'd like to pose the same question to you. Your organization, GSMA, recently released a report which found that access to 5G is expected to contribute 11 billion US dollars to the sub-Saharan African economy. What are some of the other key findings that you can share about internet and mobile access that could drastically shape the tech sector on the continent? I agree with Stefan. There's a... Um, there's a lot of positive happening. There's a lot of innovation happening on the on the continent on the back of the 3G, the 4G, the 5G, the broadband networks that are being deployed uh, across the continent. And obviously, the mobile industry has enabled a lot of this. And if we're talking about tech talent, the mobile industry is obviously an employer of tech talent, but also has invested a lot in growing tech talent. Um, but beyond looking at you were saying the young smart people that are going to be in Africa's future. I think it's not only about um, the young African coders today who can become the next um, Sam Altman, but it's also 
about all the small and medium enterprises owners, all those micro entrepreneurs who want to use e-commerce, who want to use merchant payments, all these like use cases enabled by mobile technology that can really benefit from um, 2G, 3G, 4G, and, and in the future 5G. Max, I like that you've touched on tech talent, and I'd like to throw it back to Stefan. Now, from a South African perspective, because we are known as one of the most or the most industrialized economy in Africa, is it a matter of internet access, or is it more the IT uh, integrated training programs that is needed to leverage um, that into the economy? In South Africa, over 80% of uh, the population has access to the internet and most of that through mobile technology. So connectivity, I think, is widely available. Um, there are costs of bandwidth that could be brought down if you compare it to other countries like India. But I think the fundamental opportunity for people to connect to the internet, be that for the entrepreneur or the consumer. I think that's there. Of course, it can be improved. Uh, in terms of us um, playing an important role in a global digital economy, um, it's all about skills development. I think that's where we need to do much more. And touching on skills development, in your work, Stefan, um, in this digital space well over 15 years, where are you seeing the most uh, demand for IT and digital skills, especially from a global perspective? I think um, there's two layers to it. Um, somebody said, what is the future of work? And uh, I think uh, it was the um, founder of Alibaba. He said the future of work is where, um, whatever machines can't do, human beings will do. So I think there is, uh, despite all the technological advancement, there will be a critical need for the human element, such as I just read today a study that was released by World Economic Forum, and they identified the five most critical skills. Four of them are of human nature, analytical thinking, creative thinking, uh, lifelong learning, curiosity, and leadership skills. Obviously, the current transformation is all about new technologies, and I just shared that with you. Underlying all those new developments is a familiarity with programming skills, AI, machine learning, big data, robotics, data analysis, cybersecurity, cloud and IoT are some of the big skills that have been around for a long time. I personally have been extremely excited um, through ChatGPT. We have all sorts of thousands of new generative artificial intelligence tools. So we see that in our day-to-day -day work in our organization, where we're constantly uh, trying out new applications that will then improve our productivity um, that improve the speed of our thinking and bring in new skills on board. So I think there's two, la three layers. One are the human skills. The other one is, are those fundamental um, new technologies. But I think the next layer that is and has already affected us tremendously last year are those new generative uh, artificial intelligence tools that I predict are rapidly um, going to transform the way we do business, the way we go about our personal lives, the way we uh, learn. And now before I let the both of you go, I want to ask a question about potential when it comes to tech, digital and IT expertise on the continent. Why is Africa's youth best suited to feed this demand and what will it take for us to get there? I'm going to throw it back to you, Stefan. Well, I think we used to talk uh, always about human capital. And uh, South Af Africa as a whole, with its large youth population, has a huge human capital. The challenge, therefore, is very simple. How can we develop the necessary skills for people uh, to be productive? I think that is the big opportunity and the challenge. I don't think, from my observation, that governments have gone very far uh, beyond policy statements. I don't think they've really gone very far 
in terms of investing in the training of young people um, or in creating an enabling policy framework. These are some of the things that we still need to do. And Max, your thoughts on African youth and their potential in IT tech and digital space? Yeah, I think I think the potential is great, and we're seeing it like realized in a lot of examples. There are a lot of like SMEs, but also startups in Africa. We've we've funded through our innovation fund dozens of them that are like developing new new products and services that are really answering specific African needs, but that other regions can really learn from. I mean. Like we work with crop to cash in Nigeria, or we work with Aquaresh just today uh, uh, raised in uh, in Kenya on the aquaculture field. So there's like a, a very broad range of um, um, different topics and areas and so on where technology can be used by strong local talent to um, create solutions, but also create employment. I would maybe add. Um, uh, two things. One is, um, Stefan just mentioned, local governments, they obviously have a role to play. And I think it's the private sector and the public sector that need to work together to build the skills that are needed at, at all level. The other point that I would mention is that, um, especially for the higher skilled workers, there is the question of how to keep this talent in Africa. Um, on the one hand, it is positive for them to go to Europe or the US or China and gain a new uh, expertise and so on. But we we need to ensure that there is uh, enough for them to come back and to bring back this expertise to Africa. And I think there's also the other question, which is a question of volume. I think in South Africa is probably a great example where there's enough volume, but you have smaller markets or tier two markets or markets where um, the the university system might be less developed, where there's just not enough local potential being uh, um, nurtured at the moment, especially if it is to uh, to go abroad for, for a little period to gain more experience and come back. And with that, we have heard key insights from two change makers when it comes to equipping Africa's youth with the needed skills to compete on the global tech scale stage. My thanks are with my two panelists, Max Cavillia Giacomelli, Head of Mobile and Development at GSMA, and Stefan Lauber, the Managing Director at iFundi. That is how we wrap up today's episode, but you can catch us next week right here on CNBC Africa.